you for the introduction and uh, thanks to the organizers, uh, Ahmed and Fabrice, for the invitation. Uh, I want to talk about um, positive characteristic analogs of the San Sebastian theorem. But before I get to that, uh, let me just recall the, the classical story of the complex numbers. Let F a germ of an holomorphic function at zero having zero as an isolated critical point and value zero at zero. In this situation, um, if you consider a small ball, B, around zero in Cm plus one, then the inverse image of the small disk around zero uh, is a topological fibration outside zero with typical fiber mf minus 1 of t, let's say, which also should be, which uh, is known by Miller to be, uh, to have the homotopy type of the bouquet of spheres of dimension m in number equal to nu mu, the so-called Miller number, which is the dimension of C of x0, xm, divided by the ideal uh, generated by the partials. So, if you consider the reduced cohomology of this minimum fiber with coefficient in z. Well, reduced cohomology means co-kernel of the hq of the point to hq. This is zero for q different from m. And it is z to the mu for q equal to m. Uh, this, uh, in Grotendieck's notation, is, uh, and also in Takeshi's notation, is RQ uh, phi for this map f and a coefficient z at zero. Now, a positive generator of the fundamental group of the punctured disk acts by an automorphism T on this group. It's called the monodromy operator. And um, this monodromy operator is quasi unipotent, as was conjectured by Milner and proved by Rotendieck uh, soon afterwards. Now, uh, suppose that uh, G is the second germ of holomorphic functions, say Cn plus 1. 0 to C0, zero, having also 0 as an isolated critical point. Then you can consider the so-called some map f plus g from c m plus n plus 2 to c 0 defined by f plus g of x y is f of x plus g of y and it is immediate to see that uh, this f plus g 
also has zero as an isolated critical point. And also uh, on Milner's formula, mu f equals this uh, quotient, you see that uh, mu f plus g is mu f uh, times mu g. Now, what uh, Tom and Sebastiani proved in 1970 is the following theorem. There exists an isomorphism. Construct an isomorphism from our M phi f z tensor R n phi <coughs> g of z to the similar group here R n plus n plus 1 phi f plus g of z in particular this formula gives that the rank here is a product of the ranks and compatible with the monodromy operators in the sense that Tf tensor Tg corresponds to Tf plus G. Their proof was topological using the fact that um, the Milner fiber for F plus G is a join of the Milner fibers for F and G. So this is the, the story of the C. And <clears throat> now I want to pass to the story of the FIL K, characteristic P. I'm mainly interested in the case where P is positive, but you can have P equal to zero. And for simplicity, at the beginning, assume that k is algebraically closed. Now, suppose you have uh, uh, two polynomials, fi, or i equal 1, 2, from a and i plus 1, k to a1. K and assume that again uh, Fi uh, as zero as an isolated critical point or so isolated point of non smoothness. Then uh, Take n equal to n1 plus n2. Then you can again consider f1 plus f2, which can be obtained by uh, first taking the product over k. <coughs> to a1k cross k1k. And then, so this is F1, the K, F2. And then A is a sum map, which sends uh, xy to A of xy, um, x plus y. And the previous F1 plus F2 is the composition AF. So then again, you have a a critical point uh, for this uh, sum map. And the question is to compare uh, vanishing cycles for F1, F2, and the sum map. So vanishing cycles, I mean, uh, I have to uh, vanishing cycles in the uh, etal sense. So I have to fix some coefficient uh, ring, lambda. 
So here, I will not take a finite uh, field of uh, characteristic L. I will just take, let's say, Z model L nu. Possibly you could take ZL, or you could take, uh, of course, QL, you could take QL bar, you could take something intermediate here, some finite extension of QL, or you could take the ring of integers of this extension. But I'm mostly interested in the case of a, a finite coefficient like this. So um, if you consider uh, our phi, fi, of lambda, and you shifted by n i, then um, this is by uh, uh, Gabber, this is a perverse shift. And because uh, uh, zero is an isolated critical point, it is near zero, it is concentrated at zero. So it's a perverse sheaf which is concentrated at a point. So it has to be also in degree uh, concentrated in degree zero, which means that our phi itself is concentrated in degree minus i. So you had our q phi of fi of lambda is zero for q different from n i. And some power of lambda, let's say lambda r i for q equal to n i. So now the question is, and of course the same uh, is true for uh, the sum map uh, a f. Uh, or Q uh, phi uh, AF or lambda because again zero is an isolated critical point. There's zero for Q from zero and uh, the lambda to the R for Q equal to n plus one. So the question is um, Can one find an isomorphism uh, in the form of Q phi fi of lambda at zero tensor here uh, n i phi fi at zero tensor r sorry n one n two phi f two to R phi uh, AF at zero, um, which would have certain um, naturality in the sense that if you assume that your situation of the key comes by um, extension of scalar uh, from situation of a subfield K zero of, uh, of K, then uh, this isomorphism should be compatible with the isomorphism automorphism of k over k0. Um, well, uh, the answer in general is no. Uh, there are two kinds of uh, obstructions or problems, if you like. Um, two kinds of obstructions. So no, no in general, I mean, in certain cases, it would be uh, possible. So the first uh, obstruction is wide ramification. So in fact, um, with Takeshi, we, we have just seen that. In fact, um, in this case, uh, contrary to what happened, uh, what happens in uh, other complex numbers, uh, the Milner number for fi 
uh, which is defined similarly as before, uh, is in general larger than Ri, and strict inequality is possible. In fact, as Takeshi recalled, we have the Deling uh, formula, which says that uh, mu Fi is not the dimension of uh, phi and i, but uh, the total dimension, the total dimension of r and i phi, phi lambda at zero, that is, is uh, ri plus si, where si is the Swan conductor. And again, we have mu for AF is mu F1 times mu F2. But this translates into uh, the formula R1 plus S1 times R2 plus S2 is Rs, and not R1 plus R, R, plus S. R, R plus S, sorry, but not R1, R2 equal R. Second obstruction is that even in the, the best uh, case you could dream of, uh, same ramification, both for uh, Fi, F2, and some map, then uh, you can have something natural with respect to Galois uh, automorphisms. Um, where is the... Yeah. So perhaps I should... Uh, then I will... So even in the rather simple example, following simple example, so suppose you take n1, n2 is 1, and you take f1 is f2 from a1 to a1 f1 of x is x, f, f i of x is x square. Maybe it's okay. n1 plus 1. From a2. Maybe it's 0. I think the annotation is the n plus 12. It's a n2. Oh, yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. Uh, n1 equals n2 equals 0. Yes. Yes, sorry, thank you. So then, in this case, uh, f1 plus f2 is af uh, from a2 to a1. It's just x1, x2 goes to x1 square plus x2 square. And uh, <coughs> then in this case, uh, suppose, uh, in fact, instead of working over k, I st uh, start over just fp, and in this case, the um, uh, r phi, in fact, uh, concentrated in degree zero because, because relative dimension is zero for fi is just uh, lambda twisted by some uh, team the ramified character chi of the Galois group, which is defined by uh, chi of sigma is uh, the sigma of square root of t divided by square root of t, so the value in plus or minus one, the ramified. While you get uh, R1 
phi for a f. Well, you get um, the inertia, in fact, acts trivially. But you get something um, arithmetically non-constant. You get uh, lambda of minus 1. So here, this is the twist. Then there are some uh, other unramified character epsilon, uh, which comes from, uh, which is the character of Galois of fp bar over fp, and which sends the Frobenius fp to minus 1p. Uh, this is seen because you uh, you want to write uh, x1 square plus x2 square as a product, then you have to extract the root of minus 1. So then, uh, if you take a tensor product, then this kills that, so you get just lambda, while uh, here you have something non-trivial uh, arithmetically. So, uh, in 1981, the link proposed a solution that uh, you should replace uh, a tensor product by a local convolution product. Um, So consider the initialization of A1, so maybe a H initialization of A1 at 0, and you had the close point 0 and generic point eta and inclusion J. So suppose uh, Mi for I equal 1, 2, is a sheaf of lambda module over eta, uh, free of finite type, say. So this corresponds to a representation of Galois of eta bar over eta into a uh, free uh, module, finite type. Then um, you can Consider the, the product here over k and take again its initialization, I will denote it by a, a 2h. And the sum map, or the map which is induced by the sum to a h. Now you can extend m1 and m2 by 0. onto a h, and then you can take their external tensor product over the product and localize it here, and then you apply r phi a at 0, so that uh, you get something in a priori in dbc of a h and lambda, and in fact, it turns out that our Q phi A of J lower shriek M1 tensor J lower shriek M2. So this is not on the, uh, this is just on the cross point of A H because it's uh, it's the the R phi. Oh yes, yes, uh, zero. Yes, sorry. Thank you. Uh, then this is um, zero for Q, different from one, and this is something in uh, dimension one which I will denote by M1 star one M2. 
this uh, convolution was introduced first by Deling and then uh, widely studied by Lomont in his paper on uh, Fourier transform and product formula for the constants. And uh, in Lomont's notation, it was a star. But later, I want to take complexes, uh, M1 and M2, constructible complexes, and then I want to take the R phi or R psi, and uh, I will use the star. So then I will here use this notation. So in any case, um, uh, the link formula was that In fact, if you replace a tensor product by this uh, convolution, then uh, this is correct. Then our n1 phi f1 lambda at zero, star one, our n2 phi f2 lambda zero is isomorphic to our n plus one phi f lambda at zero. Um, uh, he gave a proof in 1981 in his seminar. I got some notes, but he, he went very fast, and my notes were not so good. I could never reconstruct the argument. It was a complicated uh, compactification and deformation argument. And when I asked him recently, he said that he didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> then I. I so, uh, in any case, uh, before I, and I say more about that, uh, let me say uh, the difference between star and uh, tensor. So, we'll see later that in the, the case K is algebraically closed, let's say, and um, ramification is tame, then uh, star, is isomorphic to star, uh, star is isomorphic to tensor product, actually. But in general, not. And this star, actually, takes care of the uh, arithmetic input, I explained uh, here. In fact, uh, in the early 2000, uh, Foulet uh, thought about the problem and um, uh, gave a proof of the, the Lin's formula, even in a slightly more general uh, situation, using um, Fourier transform, local Fourier transform of Le Mans, which had the miraculous property of transforming a convolution into tensor product. Plus, Gaber's formula for R psi, tensor R psi. So what do I mean by that? is that uh, Gaber had proven that uh, formation of the nearby cycles is compatible with uh, external product over a tray. So product, something like, like this, here a tray. Um, uh, he put a prep in an archive, uh, which should appear soon. I put it, I think, two years ago. And, but about the same time, maybe in 2011 or 12, um, De Ling proposed some uh, generalization of this uh, formula. Um, which involves complexes and more general uh, spaces than uh, affine space. So suppose you have x1 over there, let's say a h, f, f, so f i. So this is a finite type. And um, suppose you have uh, complex uh, Ki in D C T F of lambda. If lambda is ZL, then you could just put uh, D B C like in uh, in Takeshi's um, uh, lecture. Or if lambda is F L, yeah? 
Uh, then uh, you can consider the, uh, let's suppose you have some point here, geometric point xi, like this, over zero here. Then uh, the Lean conjecture um, Let's say D. Uh, assume that um, uh, Ki, or assume Fi, Ki is universally uh, locally acyclic uh, outside uh, Xi. Then um, you have a natural isomorphism, uh, R phi F1, K1. So this means the, uh, the right version of this uh, star one previously. So it means that you, uh, you extend by zero. So this is at X1. We extend by zero, take tensor product, external tensor product, and push down by the sum map, but in the derived sense. Uh, so pushing down by the, the sum map, you have here this A2H over AH. Correspond to taking up psi a at the point uh, zero, but uh, since you, you work with r phi, which are zero at the at zero, then taking up psi or r phi is zero, so uh, you can just take the, the previous formula with r phi, and you get this this, and then this should be isomorphic to r psi to r phi for this map AF, defined as uh, before, so x1 cross x2, then you have f1 times f2 to a1, a cross uh, a1, to a h cross. And then you, <coughs> you extend it to, uh, you pull back by a2h and then uh, compose with uh, the sum map. So here, external tensor product, I mean external tensor product here, and then I, I take and pull back here by a, a 2h here, and then I push by, by a. Uh, so do you need to take a fiber at x1, x2? Yes, thank you. And here x is uh, x1, x2. Why did you put r phi at phi a f? What did you write there in the substance? Well, you uh, you you take the um, uh, you push that by uh, r phi for this uh, uh, addition map from the a two h. Hmm? Hmm? Um, so. Uh, you see, you call it f. You don't have f. F is f one. F one, f two. I am. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, that's okay. Yes, yes. Yes. So f is f one. F one cross f two. Yeah. Maybe I should write it here. Hmm? So, uh, is, it, uh, is it clear or, or not? Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a, a clear. So you take the product and then you apply uh, sum, so you get the sum map. So this is, uh, so this AF is uh, somehow the F1 plus F2. Yeah? So uh, my result is that um, uh, D is true 
And in fact, the, this assumption is superfluous. Well, um, the proof is a bit stupid. Um, I just uh, retain from uh, Fouley's proof the fact that um, uh, R phi, R psi, sorry, R psi, uh, commutes with um, uh, external products. But uh, here, when you say that, you are a little vague. So, upside commutes with external products over a tray. But uh, here, it's not a product over a tray that we are performing. So, in here, x1 over a a1, x2 over a2, x2 and x2 over a1, and you do you perform the product over a1 cross a1. So this is a two-dimensional basis. So. In fact, you would need um, a two-dimensional base. It would be, what you need actually is um, a compatibility of Psi with external products, but in a slightly more general uh, form like here. But then uh, you are in trouble because you, you land into an unknown territory. So nearby cycles over a base of dimension two. So, but then you have this uh, marvelous uh, formalism that uh, Takeshi mentioned, the, the Li, uh, nearby cycles over general base. And then you can apply that and um, you can expect uh, the Kunis formula, and then uh, everything should, should come out. And this is indeed the case, but I will say a few more, uh, a little more about that. So three uh, short review of uh, nearby cycles or their general basis. Um, this is a construction of Deligne, 1981, I think. If you have two uh, morphisms of schemes, say x to f and g to y, then you can construct uh, what is called the uh, oriented product of x and y over s. Which is not a scheme, but uh, a topos, so category of sheaves on some site, with two maps P1 and P2, projection to x and y. And, well, between morphisms of two pulses, you, you can have maps. And so you, here you have a two map tau from GP2 to FP1. So it's morphism from uh, uh, G lower star P2 star to F lower star P1 star which is universal in the obvious sense. Uh, that means that any time you have the top of T and projection Q1, Q2, and the map T from GQ2 to FP1, 
then there exists a unique map H making the two upper triangles commute and so that uh, T is obtained by composition with H from Tau. The Tau path is constructed uh, as sheaves over a side consisting of triple U dW where U is et al over X, D is et al over Y, and W is et al over, sorry, S, Y, like this, with a certain topology I have no time to, to recall now. A point, uh, by the universal property, what is the point of this uh, topos? Then you take T to be a uh, uh, punctual topos, so then you get a point of X, a point of Y, and a map from uh, the in image from G by G from the point of Y, so points of this oriented product of the triples, a point X of X, a point Y of Y, so I mean geometric point, and a map between points, that is a specialization map, <coughs> like in Takeshi's uh, uh, lecture, from g of y to f of x. Um, if you, some, there are two special instances of this um, um, oriented product which are of interest. Uh, the first one, which is the main object of, into consideration here, the vanishing topos, where you take y to be s and g is the identity, vanishing topos, and another one is the s cross s y, the co-vanishing uh, topos. So this was in fact uh, appeared first in some work of Faltings and. Uh, uh, later was studied by Abbess and Gros in their work on Simpson's correspondence. But are we both stay interested in this? Actually, uh, to get a feeling about this, suppose X is just a, a point. Uh, then x cross, um, say, s cross s, s, so s here, the geometric point. So this is just the strict localization of s at s. And now, now if you have a geometric point x of x, with image s, then the map here corresponds to the map induced by F of the strict localizations. Now, uh, here in the vanishing uh, topos, we have um, those two projections on S and here x, p1, p2, and here it's f. So if I look here at the following diagram, so this is commutative, so by a universal property, this is defined a map, psi, f, which uh, in fact uh, gives uh, rise to a derived functor, uh, nearby cycle functor, of psi f, from d, d plus of x lambda to d plus of x cross s, s lambda. In the case, uh, s is a tray with close point s and eta, then uh, this uh, xs cross s 
Eta is the familiar two pos in the AG713, uh, 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 consisting of sheaves on, uh, on, uh, on the special fiber together with an action of the Galois group of uh, eta bar over eta compatible with this action on, uh, on the XS. And in fact, in this case, it's easily seen that our psi f of k restricted to this s eta is the classical, the usual, usual uh, our psi. And similarly, we have also some uh, our phi, because this uh, triangle here gives rise to a map from p one upper star k to our psi fk and a cone of phi k. And again, the alpha k restricted to this is the usual um, uh, phi. Now, the, um, not much time. Uh, how is uh, this uh, object uh, good or bad? Then, um, You have a notion of finiteness on this uh, uh, topos. I mean, given a sheaf of lambda modules on this oriented, uh, on this uh, vanishing uh, topos, then you can say when it is constructible. So if f is a, is a sheaf on lambda modules, on this oriented product, you have a notion of constructible. So you have, uh, can write x as a disjoint union of x alpha and s of s beta, so that this is, the restriction is least. And uh, this is a good notion, uh, it's a thick subcategory of the category of lambda modules, and then it gives rise to a good uh, derived category, DBC, on this. You mean this uh, locally constant, fine, fine locally constant, not just uh, least constructible? Least constructible, yes. Yes, yes, thank you. Hmm. Now... Uh, Even to the, the general notion of constructibility of growth and decay? Yes, yes. So, um, here I should say that, uh, to be safe, I was a little uh, careless here. I should, to be on the safe side, suppose S is Noetherian, um, and uh, this is of finite type. This is the only case of interest for me. And then you have a good notion. In, uh, well, already constructibility on general schemes, uh, you have to be a little uh, careful. Yeah what you mean by really closed. So then the, um, we, the definition, we said that fk is a psi good if uh, our psi fk is in dbc, so for k, k in dbc, a constructible complex in the sense of Takeshi, of x cross s, uh, s lambda and uh, Bayesian compatible. Actually, by uh, theorem of Rogogozo, the second condition implies the first one. But uh, here are some examples. If s is the dimension at most one, then any fk is upside good. This is due to the linear. Uh, the case of dimension zero, by the way, is uh, not trivial. This is a, a local acyclicity of map over, map over a field. Second, if, um, so if fk is universally locally acyclic, then fk is 
psi good actually, and in fact, uh, our phi f k is zero universally. As uh, Takeshi pointed out, this uses some argument in uh, SGA four and a half to infinitude uh, appendix. And three, which is uh, which was of use to him, suppose it's universally acyclic outside sigma in X, which is uh, quasi finite over S. Then F K is a psi good. And this implies the flatness of phi in his notation. So actually, the bad cases are blow-ups or maps with uh, hidden blow-ups, like uh, Saba constructed. But uh, the main theorem is that uh, after some modification, uh, All losses are restored and so is end. That is, our psi becomes constructible and compatible with base change. So we had theorem of Ogogozo, which is that uh, given so x of so the s, finite type, the theorem here, and uh, lambda, of course, is z mod ln. Is model new and L is invertible on S. Then uh, there exists a modification, uh, let's say G from S prime to S, such that, well, S prime, K prime with the obvious notation that is base changed by G is psi F prime good. And uh, this is the, the main uh, result I will use in my, uh, in my proof of uh, theorem one. So now uh, four, is, I briefly described the Kunis formula. Now suppose you have, so it's a very general, uh, general situation. Suppose you have the situation x1 over y1, s, y2, uh, x2, so then you get uh, x over y, this is the product, x1 cross uh, x2 over y, over s, and if you have uh, k1 here and k2 here, then by general nonsense you get a map from uh, our psi f1 k1, so which leaves on the uh, vanishing topos of this map, tensor product of psi F2 K2 uh, into of psi F of K, where K is the external tensor product. And theorem two is that... Uh, F1, F2, and F. The is it is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Hmm? So theorem two is that uh, assume uh, F1, K1, psi good, uh, F i, K i, psi good. So this is always the case if uh, s, uh, if y is uh, y1 and y2 are a dimension one, which is the case of interest for me in the affine line. Then, then a star uh, is an isomorphism. And in fact, uh, f k is also psi good. Do you assume that one of them is finite third dimension to make it uh, bounded, or it's not? Uh... So uh, ki, I'm sorry, ki uh, uh, dbct uh, dctf. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. 
So just to, to be sure to follow, so you are identifying the vanishing topos of F1, product vanishing topos of F2 with... No. No, 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 let, let me uh, explain it here. So, or maybe because you're on the right hand side uh, here. So, uh, in fact, you, um, so you have uh, here x1 goes to x1 cross y1, y1, right? By psi f1. And then here you have x, x and here x2, right? And here you have x cross y, y. You have two projections here. And here it's an, uh, x, x2 cross y2, y2. So you have psi f and psi f2. And so what I said in saying is that you have the map from the psi here, psi here, external tensor product here, into the psi here. Right? And I claim that uh, if you assume that f i k i is psi good, then this map is an isomorphism. And um, uh, also the r psi, uh, psi f. The, the fk is also psi good. And in fact, the proof is um, just a, a game using um, Gogozo theorem. Uh, in fact, uh, the problem is that a priori you don't know whether this is a psi good. If it was, then it means that uh, you could do base change and reduce to a, to a tray. So if you reduce to a tray, then you are reduced to, uh, to Gaber theorem. So, in fact, uh, what you do is by uh, Gozo, you make uh, F, Fk good by some uh, proper hypercover. And then you have to use uh, cohological descent. But then you have to use both classical cohological descent, like in the Ling, 50 years ago, and also a more recent cohological descent, oriented uh, descent by, by Gaber, which is also in this, uh, this volume on uh, his work. So then you get that. And then uh, it's, uh, I have, I think, five minutes. Uh, ah, sorry. Complicated, uh, maybe I should. So in fact, it's um, then formal to deduce theorem one from theorem two. So again, you use some uh, general nonsense. So theorem two uh, implies theorem one. So suppose you have a, a composition like this. F, G, and G, F. Then you have X to X across Y, Y. And here you have a X cross z, z. Here you have psi f, here you have psi g f. And here you have some uh, map induced by g, which I denote by g with uh, an arrow above. And of course, you have that r psi uh, g f is uh, r g lower star of r psi f. So composition of vanishing cycle. So the, the effect of this g, so remember, Suppose x is just a point. So what is this g, g uh, with arrow? It's a projection of the, the minor ball uh, at, at x, the minor ball at y. And uh, somehow it's some kind of uh, calculating direct image is calculating uh, a vanishing cycles. So vanishing cycles are vanishing cycles. And uh, then you apply this to g equal to a, the sum map. And you get, uh, you get the formula. In fact, you get the formula first for r psi. That is r psi. r psi k is uh, r psi uh, k1, r psi k2. But uh, you need the formula for r phi. So this is more complicated. So here you have to use two things. The, the sum map is um, locally acyclic. It's smooth, actually. So A is locally acyclic. And 
And also, you have to use uh, some property of local uh, convolution, uh, namely that if you take something uh, geometrically constant over your tray, and you start it with something um, uh, extended by zero, something like this, so this is zero. So in fact, uh, when you look at the, the nearby cycles for um, the, the vanishing cycles for the product map, F1 cross F2, then you have two components. You have the R phi tensor R phi, and you have an extra component, which is mixed. Uh, K1 tensor R phi 1 and uh, R phi 1 tensor uh, K2. It's like when you have an, uh, two filtered objects of length 1 and take tensor product, you get the filtered object of length 2. So we have two parts, and you have to show that the R a lower star kills the, this remaining part, but this follows from this. So then you get the, um, the formula by looking at what happens at point, and you can even do that in families along the special fibers. So now, um, how do you recover um, uh, Tom Sebastiani, original Tom Sebastiani? Then uh, it's only on the team case. So team case, or maybe my time is almost finished, but same case, other k is k bar. Then uh, star one is in fact tensor product, even for uh, coefficient um, uh, z model n. For QL bar, uh, there is a proof in some paper by, by Foulet using Fourier transform. But in any case, uh, it's not difficult to see that um, by um, using the, the universal uh, tame cover, the, the Coomer cover. And uh, also, in this case, suppose you take G in I tame, uh, Z prime out of 1. So you have V1, V2, right? So uh, if you look at the Z2 at uh, V1 and V2 at eta bar, so then, uh, of course, the monodromy acts on the, the stoke and gives an automorphism. But as uh, IT is commutative, this is uh, an isomorphism, in fact, of the, the sheaf itself. So then you can view it as an automorphism of the sheaf. But when you take this, then uh, you have some uh, endomorphism of this also. And in fact, is that uh, uh, G upper star to this turns out to be G, let's say G1, upper star, star, uh, <coughs> G2, upper star. So in other words, uh, uh, the action is the, the, the diagonal action uh, obtained by, by G, G1 and G2 on the two components. And you can translate it into a uh, tensor product uh, by this uh, isomorphism. So you recover Tom Sebastian E theorem. And uh, with a little more work, you recover uh, the variation morphism. But I have no time to, to talk about that. So thank you very much. Start product appears because we have we start at the connect, so in the connect there is product. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the application, suddenly the start product appears. Yes. So here you you have this uh, uh, x one cross x two. Restricted to um, say a two h, and it goes to a two h, and then to a h, and we have the sum map here. So now I get the um, uh, of psi, let's say, of psi of k one, k two. So this is the external tensor product by my QNET formula for F1, F2. 
And then, uh, how do I get the vanishing for this uh, composition, AF, right? So, I explained that you apply our A lower star. This will be the our psi GF, uh, AF. So, this is the our A lower star of this product here, of psi k1, of psi k2. Now, take uh, the stroke of this at some point. Uh, look at the, uh, the stroke of this at, uh, at zero. So then, in fact, it will be the R A, I should write zero, zero star of this R psi at zero, stroke at zero, tensor R psi at zero, and A0,0 zero, zero is this, uh, this uh, actually, this uh, localization here. So, in fact, this is just uh, the definition of the tensor, of the, the star product, right? This is, by definition, uh, R psi, uh, star R psi. Except that here I work with the general K, in fact, I'm more interested in uh, uh, the, um, the R phi, and then, in fact, I have something on, the, on eta, and then I extend by zero, extend by zero, take that some product, but this is basically, uh, basically the thing. So, in fact, um, to understand the, the stokes of this R psi, I should have said a little more, but I had no time. So, in fact, um, in the... Um, uh, local situation, let's say x, s, s. So then, um, uh, in this local situation, um, you have this psi to uh, vanishing uh, topos. And here are the projection on SS. And here you have the localization of F. So this is the map from the small ball to the small ball. So this is a minor ball, minor ball. Now, by an observation uh, due to Gaber, there is, in fact, a section of this map, sigma. And, uh, in fact, it has the property that sigma, so it depends on the point x, sigma star of psi is just r psi star. So, if you take uh, r psi sigma star, of, uh, of uh, sorry, it, sorry, sigma star, uh, yeah, it, nonsense. Sigma star of uh, our psi here, let's say, um, this is in fact the, so you take sigma star here of this, and then you get our f uh, x s uh, lower star. Yeah, so sigma, uh, sigma star is in fact, uh, here is the second projection, and sigma star is P2 star. Yeah. So then you take pullback is the same as projecting, projecting, and then you get that. Yeah. So this is the basic relation which un enables you to understand the Stokes. Hmm. So I should have said also that, uh, but I, I'm taking too much time, but... Uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, if you take uh, in general, you have S here, maybe uh, big dimension uh, S and T, point X. So what is the, the stroke of our psi um, F, or let's say K, at a point, as I explained, X to S, and here a specialization map, like in... Uh, in Takeshi's uh, expose, so this is uh, in fact 
uh, well, you will write, you would think first that it's just uh, our gamma here of the xt, of the xs uh, t, k, but this is not, not that actually. So the idea is that it is okay in dimension one, but not in general. In general, you have to take a whole tube here. So it's slightly blurred. So you have here your spatial resistance map, you have S and you have T. And the tube here is here. And this is a community of minor tube. Yeah. In fact, what you get is uh, our gamma of XS, XS cross <coughs> S, 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 T. Hmm. Ah, okay. And in the good case, um, psi good, then uh, it, it commutes uh, the cohomology of the tube, restricts isomorphically to cohomology of the special fiber. So, in fact, you can, it's, it's somehow you have to think that this vanishing topos is the localization along, along um, S, and, um, or along X, if you, if you prefer. And, uh, of course, here I just explained um, for uh, just punctual isomorphism, but uh, you can make it a family on a whole special fiber. So you can define a global convolution, some global local convolution, so local downstairs, but global. And then you have a more general uh, uh, formula, and then you need that to, for the variation morphism which is also tensor product proved by the Lean uh, long ago, in fact. Okay, so I, I think I uh, talked much too much, I'm sorry. Yes, oh sure, sure. So you, you, you use the uh, additional map? Yes. Yeah. What do you get to the map to this one? Very good question. So then, uh, in fact, um, First of all, without uh, essentially no change, you could get, uh, uh, let's say, for any group scheme, in fact, uh, a smooth group scheme, and uh, a convolution at the origin. But uh, you would be interested, for example, in convolution on GM, but at zero. So at zero, well, uh, so <coughs> at zero, you get something like this. Yeah. So already for the, the constant shift, you have vanishing cycles. So in fact, it can be analyzed. And you can, uh, you can look at the, the convolution, and you can look at the phi. There are two pieces, and you can analyze, but uh, I've not gone very much uh, there. But uh, in fact, uh, convolu local convolution at various points of GM uh, have been studied by sorry, the name of the person now I don't remember. But um, uh, more recently, uh, Will Soin. Uh, I studied uh, these local convolutions, um, several points, uh, GM also, and um, also not just GM, but also for elliptic curves. So, which is a very subtle, uh, uh, subtle example. But all of these somehow go into the frame of this general uh, formalism, except that um, to calculate the local convolution is uh, always hard, even for the additive convolution and even for the art inch higher sheaf. I said, uh, in, the, in the tame case, it's easy. Yeah, okay. But how about the wild case? Then by, by Lomo, you have uh, uh, estimates on the rank and the swan. You have formulas for rank and the swan. But uh, already, Artin Schreier is not, uh, for example, take L psi. So what is it? So it's a rank three sheaf with, uh, so, uh, with swan one. So uh, 3 plus 1 is 4, which is 2 by 2, which is correct. But you have to, <laughs> to write it explicitly as a sum. Yeah. And uh, so we also did that and uh, other more complicated examples uh, also. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> so we thank the speaker again. Thank you.